I've had the unique privilege of being Jordan's friend and his brother and his schoolmate, men of God. Can I hear it? Men of God? Very good. Thank you. Yeah, so we love the men of God together. We were best friends. Um, we did everything together. We did all kinds of adventures together, whether it was from vacations to weekend getaways to countless late night quick trip runs to get some sweet tea and even missions trips and ministry. I had the unique privilege of witnessing Jordan Lewis in a specific environment that may, many people may have not had the opportunity to see. And I pray that today, as I tell you guys this, that you're going to be able to see a glimpse of the person that Jordan was, the individual, the strength, the internal fortitude that he carried, that was only exposed when bringing the gospel to people who have never heard it. That was only exposed through the lens of ministry that I got to witness. And I was a front row witness of that. I had the, I was... Um, elected and, excuse me, selected as the team leader for the mission trip to Tanzania, Africa. This is a team of all men. It's called the man team. I've been three times. The third time I went was the time that uh, Jordan accompanied me. And I, when I got selected, I was like, okay, I, I got to get Jordan to come with me. There's no, because he never complains. And Tanzania is like the hardest trip ever. I mean, I'm talking about like hiking 20 miles, sleeping in the dirt, in tents, eating rice and beans every day for an entire month and reaching unreached people groups. Unreached people groups being people who've never had the chance to hear the gospel. So I immediately approached Jordan, and I said, Jordan, you gotta come with me, man, I need you, I need you, come on, come with me. And it took, took some time, you know, because he, he wasn't a quick decision maker all the time, unless they had to do something with danger. So, <laughs> and so, when, I think once he realized that this actually was a little bit dangerous, I think he, that's when he made the decision. So he decided to go, and it thrilled me because I knew I needed somebody with me that wouldn't complain, that would be a strength to me as a leader. Because who am I, 22 years old, to be leading people, my peers over across seas to a country I've never been to, well, actually I had been, but to a country that, that doesn't speak my language to all these things. Who am I to do that? I need somebody with me to help me and to help me lead and to give me perspective. So he was the person that I, that I begged to go, and he did, and he, and he went with me. And on this journey of epic proportions, our team faced many different adversities. Our team was challenged by a killer bee attack. We were visiting a waterfall, and we, our, we, our team, killer bees, came right down the middle of us, and right, actually right down on top of Jordan. And it was really funny because he actually didn't complain a bit. He actually kind of laughed at it. He laughed in the face of danger. That was the name of the game for him. We, serve, we were challenged by a, by a charging elephant. Uh, we, our Land Rover crashed. He happened to be in the Land Rover that crashed. Um, in hard days of labor and the intense African heat, all of these things we were confronted by and challenged by, yet the entire time there was a resilience inside of Jordan that no one could really understand but only be a part of. You see, because it's hard to really truly understand what it means to be resilient. It kind of leaks off of people when you're around them that they have that internal fortitude that can only be watched and then hopefully consumed with yourself. And if you knew J-Lo, he was one of the, uh, j is what we called him, uh, he was one of the toughest guys in the world. It was kind of crazy. No matter what happened, he would just be laughing. To any normal human being, laughing at the fact that you were just stung 20 times by killer bees seems to be kind of ludicrous and insane, but not for Jordan. Because Jordan had this strength inside of him. He was absolutely and utterly fearless. I've never known a person like him. It eventually came to the point in our trip where we had to go share the gospel with these people. And our trip was specifically aimed at sharing the gospel with unreached people groups, as well as building a birthing clinic for a village that, that didn't have access to clean birthing techniques. And up to this point, you know, we were doing this work, and I looked, I looked at the team, and it was, it was about time that we went out in the village after we built some relationships to share the gospel. And I said, all right, guys. This is the real deal. This is what we've trained for. Who's ready to go and to do this thing? Now, mind you, these are people who don't know. You say Jesus, they say, who's that? These are people who have no concept of the gospel or who Jesus or, or God or anything of the sort. And the first person to raise his hand was Jordan. He was fearless. No matter what came his way, no matter what kind of opposition it was, whether it was cancer, whether it was facing... <laughs> preaching the gospel, people have never heard it, where any of us would be shaking our boots, he was fearless and said, send me. He accepted the challenge. And so I said, okay, Jordan, 
Go on out and do it. And up to this point, I had never seen a single person ever get saved on one of these trips because they're unreached people groups. We're only there to plant the seed, not necessarily there to see the harvest. And he comes back from the trip. You know, a lot of the other team stays back and we keep doing the, the project and the construction site. And he had the biggest grin on his face. He had, it was the happiest I think I've ever seen him. He had this look in his eye. And we always said that Jordan had, we called them eyes, uh, eyes of hope because it was just like there was always hope in his eyes. He had this thing about him where he came back and he was grinning so big and bright. And I was like, and I was like what is this about? And so I said, Jordan, share with us what happened. And he sat down and he told us this story that I'm about to share with you now. So Jordan went out and he was going door to door and there was a man and he went to share the gospel with him. He sat down with him and he said, do you know why we're here? And he said, yes, you're building a birthing clinic. And he said, and Jordan's like, absolutely, that's why. But we're also here to share with you a message as to why we're building this birthing clinic. And he goes, goes on to explain the gospel from beginning to end, you know, and, and shares this story of what Jesus did for all of mankind and how he's rescued us from our sins. And if you look in this card right here, this picture, we had a photographer with us, and he captured the exact moment for which he shared the gospel in the moment of breakthrough. This man turned to Jordan after he told the story, and he said, I don't know if I can buy this because I can't afford it. How much does this cost? <laughs> he said, how much does this cost me? How much does this, does this redemption thing cost me? And where you see him at the bottom doing this is the moment he said, it's free. It's free. <laughs> it's absolutely free. That's the best part. It costs you nothing. That's the moment. He brought hope to dark places, light to places that, that were so dim. He, he truly fulfilled the commission of ORU where it says, raise up your students to hear my voice, to go to where my light is in dim, where my voice is heard small, my healing power is not known. Even to the uttermost bounds of the earth, the work will exceed yours, and in this I am well pleased. He fulfilled that commission to the letter. He brought the gospel to the uttermost bounds of the earth, to the places where the light was the dimmest. And the best part of the whole story is, Jordan asked the man, what's your name? Oh, the man received Christ. The first one in the entire village. The first man I've ever witnessed or heard that actually received Christ. And he was in these unreached people groups. And, he said, and Jordan said, what's your name? And the man said to him, my name is Emmanuel. If you know anything about the name Emmanuel, it means God with us. Jordan was a forerunner, a person who went and planted seeds. And years later, another team returned to that village and they brought back a report that a revival had happened there. From the seeds that Jordan planted, the very first person to go and teach the gospel in a real and authentic way, it had spread far beyond his reach. He brought hope to dark places. And you see, that's, that's Jordan in a nutshell. <laughs> you see, he had this thing that I would like to call fearless faith. And fearless faith is not to be confused with blind optimism. Fearless faith is the fuel that burns hope into the heart of believers and into unbelievers. It's the armor that he wore that made him so resilient. Fearless faith stands in the face of anything that comes against us, any challenges or opposition, and says, my God is greater. It says, no matter what may come against me, God has my back. And no matter what it was, he always carried this fearless faith with him. No matter what the storms of life brought his way, he never gave up on hope, and he never complained. No matter what. There's multiple things he taught me with this fearless faith. He taught me that joy is a choice. That faith is a choice, despite the circumstances we may be in. That in joy, hope is found. And that we as people, no matter how broken we are, have the ability to choose the attitude we have in any circumstance. We have the ability to, to, to choose life in the face of death, no matter how bright or dark. His slogan was always, I will live and not die, and I'll proclaim the works of the Lord. <laughs> and if, if you were anything like me, when I, when I first heard of his passing, 
I was very confused. I viewed the slogan as a defeat, as almost something that failed. I was like, God, where were you? What is this? I don't understand. He, he said this every day, of, every day during the struggle. I will live and not die and proclaim the works of the Lord. So God, where, where are you in this? And the Lord spoke to me, and I want to share to you, with you today what he said to me. He said that phrase is not falsified by the situation. It actually still rings true. Although he has left this in body, the lessons he taught still live. Although his physical body has died, his spirit lives on, and the messages and the, and the lessons and the lifestyle he lived is within us. And the funny thing is, he still has the ability to proclaim the good works of the Lord through us. We carry his message. We carry the hope that he carried to everybody he was around. We carry that beam of light that we all knew him to be. It is through us that this phrase still rings true. <clears throat> we can carry his fearless faith and proclaim what the Lord can do despite any circumstance. The last thing Jordan would want is for any of us to lose faith. So let's carry his legacy of fearless faith with us and make his message live on forever. The funny th he was my hero. He is my hero. And the funny thing about heroes is, heroes aren't always made, excuse me, heroes are not always made in the battle itself or in the results of the battle, but they're made in how they fight it. Many times the heroes that we remember are not we don't remember them for their victories all the time. We remember them for how they acted in the course of battle. We remember them for how they pursued hope in the face of impossible odds. And Jordan personifies that to the letter. So let's carry hope with us. Let's carry the beautiful message of fearless faith that him and Katie so wonderfully taught us. Thank you.